welcome to the next lesson of the Amazing Selling Machine, Freight Estimates and True Product Cost. And here's what we'll be covering. What is true product cost? Why calculating the true cost of a product is critical to your business? How to determine your final three suppliers for each product? And how to get an accurate estimate of shipping and freight costs. The true product cost is the total cost of your product including everything that you spent on it by the time that it arrives at Amazon and it's finally ready to be sold to a customer. This includes the total product costs, including packaging, logo, color, inserts, basically everything that you pay your supplier for your product. It also includes the cost of importing the product if you happen to be importing it, the cost of any inspection services if you chose to do that, the cost of shipping the product then to Amazon, usually by UPS or FedEx, and something called an FBA label service, which is 20 cents per unit if you're going to be using this. Now we will be going over these more in detail in a future module, but I just want to bring them up because we're going to use this when estimating our true product cost. Let's go take a quick look at our product opportunity spreadsheet to see how these different numbers will be used in our calculations. So I'm back on the product opportunity spreadsheet and I went to the rabbit corkscrew tab because that's the product that we're working on. But the information that we're gonna enter here for one supplier for this one product, you also have to enter in for the other products and the other suppliers as well. It'll all flow over exactly the same. You just enter the same information on the appropriate tab for the product that you're working on. So for the rabbit corkscrew, you'll see that all the columns that have highlighted in yellow here, these are for this product and for this supplier. Wylankan Crafts and Gifts Company Limited. So I'm going to enter the following information. The price of the product, that's the total price that we're paying the supplier, including any packaging and inserts. The import cost per unit, and I'm going to show you how to estimate what that is using a tool called Freytos in this lesson. If you're using an inspection service, you put in what the actual cost is per unit, and I am estimating 20 cents per unit. Then, when you do import a product and you have it sent either to yourself at your house or to your freight forwarder's warehouse, the next step is actually to send it to Amazon because we don't recommend having your products for your very first shipment sent straight from your supplier straight to Amazon because you really need to check these out to make sure that your supplier did a good job. So even though it costs a little extra to pay for this shipping once it comes to you or your warehouse and then to Amazon, we think it makes sense for the first shipment at least because that way you'll make sure you don't have any issues. But what you don't know is how much that's going to cost. And until your product is actually manufactured and it's arrived and you go into your seller central account and create the UPS shipping labels, you won't know either what it is. We'll show you how to do that later on. But for now, I'm going to estimate 50 cents a unit for this product uh, because that's probably a good estimate for any product around the weight of a pound. But you'll know exactly what that is once you actually have your products ready and you're going to get them, get them shipped in Amazon. And then the last thing is the 20 cent fee for the Amazon FBA label service. Amazon requires you to have an FNSKU label put over your UPC code on the box of your product. Now you can have your manufacturer do it, you can do it yourself, you can have your freight forwarder or inspection service do it, but to keep things simple, just let Amazon do that. It's only 20 cents and that way you know that there's no problems at all with how it's gonna happen. Later on down the road, if you choose to have it automatically put on your packaging when your supplier makes it, that's totally fine. But for now, we recommend just doing it the easiest way and having Amazon do it and therefore budget 20 cents per unit. Now, if you notice, I also have each of these costs separated into a box called the cost of product. So the first three that include the supplier price, import shipping costs, and inspection service are all in this one big cell called the cost of product. And the reason I do that is because we're going to take these three values, put them together, and then put them into the FBA revenue calculator tool that we already looked at a little bit in a previous lesson. And we're also going to take the next two figures and put them into the ship to Amazon field in the FBA revenue calculator tool as well. So even though we're coming up with like five different cost components, there's only two places to put them on the FBA revenue calculator tool. And I wanted to show you how to do that and make it simpler for you. So let's go take a look at that tool right now. I know we already looked at it one time, but I want to go over it one more time and show you how to take these values and put them over into that. So in order to get to the calculator tool, I'm just gonna use the link that we already have in this file for you. It's gonna pull it up over here. We need to enter in the product that we're looking to use, Rabbit Corkscrew. 
Then we need to pick the one that matches the product we're looking to source, and that's this one right here. Now there's three values we need to put in. First is the price that we're gonna sell this for. So we're selling this one for $26.50. The next one is the ship to Amazon field. So these are all the costs that it's gonna to take to get it to Amazon and the labeling service as well. So I'm gonna go over here. Under ship to Amazon, we know it's 50 cents plus 20 cents. And if you highlight these, Excel and Google Sheets will automatically do a sum for you in the lower right-hand corner. That's 70 cents for those two fields together. I'll put that over here. And then we need the cost of the product. Now we also have all three of these over here under the cost of the product header. And I'm gonna add these together again. If I look in the lower right hand corner or I can add them together myself, it's $6.60. We will put that in over here, $6.60. And then we just hit calculate. And so the net profit is $10.73. Now I need to put that into our spreadsheet. So the FBA revenue tool net profit, $10.73. And the profit margin automatically calculates is 40.49%. And I can actually validate that that calculation is correct by going back to the revenue calculator tool. And there it is, 40.49%. Now we had to take this value, the net profit, $10.73, and put it into our spreadsheet because we can't calculate that automatically because of the Amazon fees. While we know that in most cases the referral fee is 15%, what we don't know for each of these products are what the FBA fees. What's the charge for Amazon pick and packing it, for shipping it to customers, for storing us. That's why we had to enter that right here. And that tells us then what our profit is though. So now we know for this product, we have a really good profit margin, over 40%. Now when I go and I get quotes from the other suppliers, for this product, I simply enter all the information into here just like we did. I use the calculator tool to find out what the net profit is for that, and that'll tell me what our net profit margin is here. So hopefully that tells you how to use this spreadsheet and then also how to use it with the Fulfillment by Amazon Revenue Calculator tool. Now let's talk a little bit about why this is so important for us. Until we know the true cost for each product, we can't determine what the potential profit is for us. We don't want to do all this work only to find out that we can't make any money off one of these products that we choose. So we definitely need to do this before we order our samples. Otherwise, we're wasting time and money. Also, knowing the true cost and knowing the potential profit will help us compare our top three opportunities and then pick the single best one. Now our next step, and this is a very critical step, is to narrow down our potential suppliers. So before we can calculate our cost and our potential profit, we have to narrow suppliers down to three. So once you've heard back from all of our potential suppliers, and remember, we should have been reaching out to five to 10 suppliers for each product, you need to narrow down to just three for each of the products based upon this. Their responsiveness, their willingness to be flexible, the price they quoted you, the MOQ, and definitely the lower the better, and then also the product and packaging options. Now, there is no magic formula for this. You can't go off at just one of these things and go with the lowest price or the best MOQ. You need to look at all five of these because you're building a potentially long-term business relationship and sometimes paying a little bit more for a product is really worth it if you have a great supplier who's very responsive and willingness to be flexible in other areas for you. Now, once we've narrowed down our potential supplier list to the top three for each product, we have almost everything that we need. We should have the product costs, including packaging, inserts, instructions, logos, etc. Everything basically that our supplier has quoted us will be the cost of our product. We know that the Amazon FBA label fee will be 20 cents per unit. We can estimate that the inspection service fees will also be 20 cents per unit. So now we need to figure out what the shipping costs will be. And there's two different types of shipping costs. And we'll go over why there's two in a later lesson. The first one is what it actually costs to import your product from your supplier. That's getting it manufactured and then shipped to your house or to your freight forwarder's warehouse or to an inspection service. We recommend first, before you have your product sent straight from the supplier to Amazon, it goes somewhere else, especially for your very first order, to make sure that you or someone you trust can inspect the products to make sure that everything is fine. We don't have that quote yet, but what we do have is we can estimate what the final shipment to Amazon then via UPS can be, and we're gonna estimate that at 50 cents per unit. 
So what we need to focus on is how much will it cost or what's a really good estimate for what it will cost to import your product from your supplier. So here's how we'll estimate the shipping costs. First, if your supplier is domestic, so they're making the products in the exact same country they'll be shipping to, then they should be able to give you a pretty accurate estimate of how much it's going to cost to have those products shipped. If, however, your products need to be imported and shipped overseas, the best way to get an estimate is to use an online freight tool such as the Freightos tool. And I'm giving you the link right here, and it also exists in our private resource vault. The Freightos tool is one of the most powerful online shipping estimating tools we've ever seen. And not only can you use this tool for getting estimates on shipping costs, you can actually get real quotes from it that you can use later on once you're finally ready to ship your product. Now, in order to get these estimates, you'll need the shipping dimensions in cubic meters and kilograms of either your entire shipment or of each carton. And your supplier should be giving you that information if you use the supplier contact templates that we asked you to use. Keep in mind that the one thing these estimates don't include is the customs duty, which is basically an importation tax. The average duty rate is around 5%. It can range anywhere from 3 up to 12%, but it's around 5%, and we like to use that for our estimates. And remember, it's based off the total product cost that you're paying your supplier. It has nothing to do with your shipping costs. It's what you actually pay your supplier for your entire shipment. Now, the one thing to do when you're trying to get an estimate is to pick the city closest to you that you'll have the product shipped to, because you need to tell the Freightos tool where the product's coming from, so that would be your supplier's city, and then where you're shipping it to. And since we don't really know exactly where it's going to be going to, just pick the city closest to you to get an estimate. And remember, these are just estimates. They're going to vary, but this is just to really determine which of our top three products and suppliers we're going to be going with. Now, let's actually go use the Freightos tool to estimate our shipping costs. So here I am on the Freightos tool, and the first thing you'll want to do before you actually get an estimate is sign up for a free account. You simply go to the top, click on sign up, enter your information, and you'll get a free account. It doesn't cost anything in order to use the Freightos tool. So I'm going to log in right now. And before we actually get our estimate, I want to point out a few things. So at the top, you'll notice two different options, getting an estimate with pallets slash boxes or crates, or getting an estimate for containers. Leave it on the first option because the containers option is only if you're having an entire 20 foot or 40 foot shipping container filled with just your products sent here. Uh, and more than likely, if you're a first order, you're not doing that. That's a really, really, really large volume of products. Next, you may be tempted to click on the ship to Amazon FBA button, but we do not recommend that for your first order. This button will take you to a completely different calculator and it's going to show you or give you an estimate on what it will be to have your product shipped straight from your supplier straight to Amazon's FBA warehouse. I know that sounds like a great option, but you really don't want to do that for a lot of reasons, especially on your first couple of shipments. Uh, the first one is we don't know which Amazon FBA warehouse your products are going to go to until your products are done being manufactured and you can go into your account and set up your shipment. You don't know that. So we can't even put the right city in right now. Secondly, for your first shipment, Amazon will more than likely have your shipment going to multiple warehouses. So you couldn't even pick out which warehouse it is. You would need to know which different warehouses that one shipment is going to be split up and sent to. And thirdly, Really, for your first order, you want to make sure that someone, whether it's you or your freight forwarder or an inspection service, they check out these products before they send them off to Amazon. You don't want to have them just sent straight from your supplier to Amazon the very first time without someone physically checking these products to make sure they didn't get damaged during shipment and to make sure they work and everything's okay. Now, if my supplier would have given me the dimensions, so the overall weight and shipping dimensions for the entire shipment altogether, I would select the calculate by total shipment. But in my example here, I'm going to assume that they just gave me the dimensions for each carton my products are coming in. So I ordered 500 units, 50 units come to a box, so that's 10 boxes they're coming in. So I'm going to use this option. I'm going to tell them there's 10 boxes are coming in. The dimensions are actually going to be in centimeters. Um, it can be in either inches or centimeters, but I found that most suppliers from overseas give it in centimeters and kilograms. So my dimensions are 50 by 30 by 50. And you'll see over here, Freighto starts telling you what that is in cubic meters, which is what they need in order to estimate the shipping costs. They also need to know the total weight. So I'm going to say that the unit weight for each carton 
is 25 kilograms. Alrighty, now the next section is where are they going to be picking up the goods from? So in this situation, it's going to be from my supplier who is a factory or a warehouse, so I just leave it at that. I pick the country as China, and then you want to enter the city that they will be picking these up from. So whatever city your supplier is in, enter that here. I'm going to start entering in, let's say it's Ningbo. And you'll notice that a lot of times it'll start auto filling it in for you. Just select it. And then you need to tell when you estimate these products will be ready. Now, this is just for estimating purposes. We don't even know which product we're selling yet. So just pick out any date in the future. Let's say 30 to 45 days ahead. So it's late October. I'm going to pick, let's see, November the 30th for now. That'll do. And then where are the goods going to? So this will either be a factory or warehouse. So if you're having your product sent to your freight forwarder's warehouse or an inspection service warehouse, you would choose that. Or if you're having them sent to your home so you can check them out first, you would select residential. And the reason they need to know this is because they need to send maybe a smaller truck. And since you don't have a loading dock at your house, they'll also need to send a special lift to get the products off the truck into your home or your garage. Um, so I'm going to select residential, pretend like they're going to my house. Then you'd enter in the zip code, let's say it's 63105 for St. Louis, Missouri. Now we'll continue on down. Under optional services, I'm not going to select insurance. I am going to select customs brokerage. What this means is that these shipments need to be cleared through customs. And if you select this, then freight will make sure that your freight forwarder will clear them through customs. So just select it, it'll make it easy. Now below that, we have to tell freight whether or not you have a customs bond, and in general, Every single shipment that's being imported has to have a customs bond. You can either have one that you get annually and it covers all your shipments for the next 12 months, or you can choose to get a customs bond for each single shipment. Now, for your first one, you don't have a customs bond, so the best thing to do is just say no, and then enter in the total value of your shipment, and my value is 2,500, and then Freitos will include a single customs bond just for this shipment. Later on down the road, once you're importing all the time, you can go ahead and save some money by buying an annual custom bond. For this first one, just select the single custom bond by telling them you don't have one. You can leave all the additional details as empty like they are, and then simply select search and book. So Freitos is searching through millions of different companies and getting estimates for me right now. All right, so now we found 145 different quotes. And if you see any that are really expensive, like the second one, the over $2,000, don't worry about it because Freitos is giving us estimates for not only by ocean, they're also giving us estimates by air, so air cargo, and express, the fastest service possible by air. So we only want to, for this first shipment, to get an ocean shipment. If you do want to have your product shipped in really, really fast and are willing to spend the money, then by all means you can do that, but just realize it's going to cost more. But under the filter section over here, I'm going to take off air, and then I'm going to take off express, which is another version of air. It's like really, really fast air. And then we'll be left with only the ocean shipments. And by default, they're gonna show us the best value, which is the best combination of speed and cost. And usually it's also the cheapest one as well. So for estimating purposes, we'll use the first freight quote of $1,075 when estimating our shipping costs. Now let's head back and show how we're gonna break these all out. So here are the details of our shipping cost estimate. Now we don't need all this information, we just need the final number we'll get at the bottom. We had 500 units at $5 each, for a total invoice value of $2,500. The dimensions of our shipment were 0.7 cubic meters and 250 kilograms. When we enter that into the Freitos tool, the total shipment was $1,075. Now we need to add in the estimated 5% duty tax, which is 5% times our total invoice, which comes out to be $125. So then our total shipping cost is the ocean shipping of 1,075 plus the duty of 125, which is a total of $1,200. Now we want to divide that by how many units we purchase, which is 500, and that means that the shipping cost per unit in this example is $2.40, and that's what we'd enter into our product opportunity spreadsheet. Now it's time to take action and update the true product costs on your product opportunity spreadsheet. For each of your top three product opportunities, update the following. Update the product prices using the quotes that you receive from each of your top three suppliers. Then using the dimensions they also provided, 
use the Freitos tool in order to come up with a shipping estimate and enter that as well. And finally, add in the 20 cent per unit estimated inspection fee. And here's a quick view of the section of the product opportunity spreadsheet to enter each of these values. And here's what's coming next. Once you have the true product cost for all your products, you'll then be able to determine your actual profit margin. And that is gonna help us choose our final product opportunity so we can place our orders for samples and determine our final supplier. So head on over to the next lesson and I'll see you there.